Well, welcome back. This is going to be the third of six videos exploring Chapter 13 of Wheeler's Security Risk Management. And what we're going to do during this particular video is look at information flows. So, as we've been talking about throughout the class, access control models look at security and risk from the perspective of users and objects. Users interact with objects. And that interaction has to be governed in such a way so as to protect the confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability of that information. Information flow control models do it a different way. They look at the information itself and is it authorized to be transferred between different entities. So no differentiation between users and objects. Instead, it's all about the information. And so, uh, you're going to make sure that information transfers are not made from a higher security object uh, to a lower security object without some level of mitigation. And risk associated with those interactions um, from the, uh, per uh, the, the perspective of an information control uh, model looks at an initiator, a target, and then the path that it's actually going to take. It can occur in memory, so it could occur in a single processor. It could occur across an entire uh, network. And as you look at this, one of the key components here is that there's certain things that should have no business talking to each other. So, for example, uh, Internet of Thing devices, uh, if they're uh, storing on-premise, typically don't need to talk to the cloud other than to get patches occasionally, and you want to mediate that step. So you want to protect those devices so that there's not just open access to the network or, or to the Internet where those devices are being attacked all the time. Instead, you want to protect them. So as we're doing this, what we're going to do over the next couple of slides is talk about trust relationships and then talk about how that influences threat and thus influences risk uh, as you're looking at an information control uh, module. Uh, and as we're doing that, here are the three. We're going to look at the type of initiator and a look at the uh, uh, threat associated with a human versus an automated initiator. We're then going to look at the endpoint medium or how it's being uh, sent across as an internal versus external or intrazone versus intrazone. And then we'll look at privilege level. Is it basic? privileged or management. So that's kind of our guide of how we're going to look at information flow control model. So as you uh, look at uh, the type of flow initiator, the book differentiates between two human and automated. And in this particular case, you can see in the little graphic over there, uh, that the human uh, is least trusted, where an automated flow is actually most trusted. Uh, why? is that because you can gather additional information about that automated flow uh, it's likely to originate from an established endpoint it has more predictable traffic especially in terms of time uh, it doesn't make typing errors and typically because we know more about it it's less threatening now that doesn't mean that the attacker isn't going to use an automated flow as the mechanism uh, for uh, launching the attack but as you look at the flow initiator, typically, uh, at least according to the book, we're going to look at automated flows as being a more trusted flow. As we look at the endpoint and the medium, um, it, this is a whole gamut running from uh, the intra system being the most uh, trusted, going all the way out to an external anonymous uh, user having the least amount of trust. And again, that kind of makes sense. They're not clear differentiations because you can have internal attacks. But again, you have some opportunity to gather more data, uh, to have more indicators uh, of abnormal behavior, and uh, to uh, uh, put additional controls in place. Um, so again, accreditation, documentation, audit can help mitigate some risk with those non-managed devices that may be coming in from externally or may be coming in internally from a, a, a cell phone. Typically, those external devices are going to require additional controls because we have less control over the device. So a, a internal state-owned device that's running our uh, malware, uh, patch management, antivirus software is likely going to be, not always, but likely going to be more secure than a personally owned device. And so, again, 
uh, you, you have to uh, look at those. Our servers, ideally, are managed in a very uh, secure configuration. And again, those should be uh, um, uh, in a different point on this um, uh, diagram in terms of the endpoint trust we have with them. And then finally, what type of uh, interactions are taking place? Is it basic, is it privileged, or is it uh, management? Um, and so uh, the, the most, starting at the bottom, is going to be that management. It's the most tightly controlled, uh, the most trusted group. Privileged is in between. Um, it is more tightly controlled than basic and is a trusted group. And then the basic level, you're going to limit the scope of access to only uh, authorized activity. All right, well, very good. That brings us to the end of this third of six videos. We very briefly explored information flow as a different control model uh, introducing the topic. We've looked at uh, different uh, components of trust associated with this and associated with making threat decisions, uh, and that's how it influences risk. We're going to uh, finish this on up. Next video, we're going to pick up and start looking at patterns and baselines. So keep on studying, keep on learning, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.